Welcome back. Collective effort is what is needed to resolve conflict and sustain peace in Nigeria. That was across four discussions at the public lecture held to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Deputy Governor of Delta State, Kingsley Otaro, in Wari. Special guest of honor, Governor Ifai Okoa, advocated strong partnership for peace building and conflict resolution. <laughs> Conflict resolution in the face of recent security challenges in the country is one of the major reasons for this gathering. Present at the occasion are Governor of Delta State, Ifai Okoa, his deputy, former Delta governors, Deputy Governor of Anambra State, among others. With particular emphasis on the Niger Delta agitations, the director of the Institute for Peace and Strategic Studies, University of Ibadan, believes that efforts to curb conflict and crisis have oftentimes been unsuccessful because of the approach. In Nigeria, we don't understand what is called conflict management. In the post conflict environment, you don't have this heavy presence of the security, you don't have security people chasing people all over the place. And then, any time I come to the Niger Delta and fly, you don't see oil still flowing on the rivers. So you have not solved the problem, but you pretend that the problems have been solved. All you are just doing to post-conflict peace building now is you are cleaning up the mess. Governor Okowa insists all must be involved in resolving conflict. We need the partnership of every critical person to be able to build peace. Because as we did say, peace cannot be achieved with Dr. Kowa and Kings Leotuaro or with Dr. Emmanuel Wetter Oduan or James Sibori or their former deputies. It is a participatory thing. Deltans must be involved. For the deputy, the federal government must leverage on knowledge of experts in peace and conflict studies to deal with the security challenges faced by the nation. Governments at every level, local government, councils, state governments, and even the federal government, that we must seek to ensure that resource persons who are able to tell us what exactly to do at a given time are actually there to issue useful advice that will put space to all of these crises we are facing. The high point of the event is the presentation of a book written in his honor titled Governance, Security and Peace Building in Niger Delta, as well as his investiture as a fellow of Society for Peace Studies and Practice. More names of alleged looters are to be released by the federal government in the coming days. The Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, insists that no amount of pressure, including what he describes as the antiques of hack writers and threats of litigation, will prevent that list from being released. Mr. Mohammed, who offered the, that assurance today in a statement, says since the release of the first two lists, there have been overt and covert attempts to blackmail the federal government into discontinuing the release of more looters' names. The statement reads, in part, All the fuss about politicizing the anti-corruption fight is aimed at preventing the government from releasing more looters' names and at the same time muddling the waters. But a thousand negative write-ups to editorials will not deter us from releasing the third and subsequent lists. End of quote. The minister challenges anyone who feels wrongly accused to seek redress in court rather than engaging in what he calls exhibitionist sophistry. Ahead of the 2019 election, major political leaders and stakeholders from the People's Democratic Party in Enugu State are giving their words to the sustenance of peace and across the state to ensure a rancor free party polity. The leaders were speaking at the peace rally organized by the PDP in the Enugu West Senatorial Zone to celebrate the restoration of peace among stakeholders irrespective of party affiliations since the inception of the Ifayogwai administration. The leadership of the People's Democratic Party at the national and state level and hundreds of party supporters in Enugu have come here from within and outside the town. They rally here to celebrate the restoration of peace amongst party members and stakeholders. 
way in his game. Yes. Good oh. Oh. Yes. There is peace between the world world and the government. <laughs> there is between peace between those in Africa and those in Enugu. There is peace between PDP and APC. Good That's why we say we have to come and thank God today. Today, we have peace in Enugu. The peace is also possible because of the leadership style of His Excellency. To ensure sustainability of accord between members of the party, they've been assured that imposition of candidates and impunity will be a thing of the past ahead of the 2019 elections. Contestants should feel free. But people that have the right to decide more color was added to the event with the presence of an APC member from the neighboring Anambra state who called for Governor Gwangi's re-election to sustain the tempo. He has won the 2019 election. He is a man of peace and God loves him just like he loves me and all of you. So everyone should vote for him. You all know that I have many APC friends, but I am supporting Governor Gwangi. Emphasizing peace, as a major component of good governance and equity, he reassures the people of his resolve for inclusiveness and mutual respect. What we are celebrating today is this. And I want to get the same. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the awesome God of Israel, the God. With this move by the party and members of the state, citizens hope of free and fair primaries and credibility in the electoral process in the state. The people of Tatiko community in Niger State are seeking the urgent intervention of the state government in providing basic amenities that will make life easier for them. The community, whose main occupations are pottery and weaving, also want the government to complete the abandoned traditional cloth weaving and pottery centre that was started in 2017. Our community report tonight explores the dilapidated structure in tactical community and the concerns of the artisans. This is Statico Community, located in Baikoro local government area of Niger State. Here, the people are mostly artisans, whose preoccupation are weaving and pottery. The men do the weaving, while the women are in charge of pottery. Obviously, there is no age limit for their profession as both the old and the young get along on the job. They explain how they came about the business of weaving and the benefits. We inherited this occupation. We grew up to see our parents and our grandparents doing it. And now we have also made it a line of business. We also hope to bequeath the trade to our children. There are, however, some challenges which hamper the progress made by the weavers. We need the government to support us by giving us soft loans that will help us boost our business. Like the men, the women who are grossly involved in their artistic clay pot molding also have stories to tell about their business. With the money we make from the business, we are able to buy all that we need. But there are challenges. No water to use for the molding, and we have a lot of children to cater for. Although Tatiko community is blessed with the skills of weaving and pottery, which makes it a tourist destination for many, it is, however, confronted with challenges of infrastructural deficit. This, for instance, is the only healthcare facility in Tatiko community. The schools in Tatiku also suffer the same fate, with roofs blown up and classes without chairs. Teaching and learning could be very difficult. The road leading to Tatiku is also in need of urgent attention, as it currently contributes to the difficulties faced by the people. The same also goes for the water facilities, which are no longer functional. 
Another turning issue for the people of Tatiko is this proposed Bagye traditional cloth weaving and poultry center. According to the people, the project which started in 2017 was for the expansion of the then existing center. For now, it's been abandoned for no reason they can explain. Tatiko community no doubt is richly blessed and without depending on white collar jobs, the people can be gainfully employed, whether old or young. It has become necessary for the government to strive towards closing up the gap in the infrastructure development of the community. Kung Fu is a series of martial art styles which developed centuries ago from China. Over time, the art has gained worldwide acceptance, especially through movies. Names like Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan and Jet Li are popular Chinese exports of Kung Fu. In the United States of America, one man in Washington, D.C. is keeping the tradition of Kung Fu alive, exploring the art's fascinating and mysterious history. RGV Tonight presents this report by our correspondent, Aurelua Shinibare, who visited the Hong Tao Choi Mei Kung Fu Academy in Washington. U Street, Northwest Washington, D.C. holds a lot of attractions which leaves tourists with a variety of fun options. A place of interest, however, is where a special art form connected to China is taught. It's the Joga or Hong Tao Choi Mei Kung Fu Academy. Once in, the ambience transports the visitor to another time and place. The music leads to this room where a stick fighting session is taking place. The teacher, or sensei, is Abdurrahim Mohammed, who has been into martial arts for over 40 years. He came across Kung Fu at an early age and never looked back. Hey. Well, it began for me, um Martial arts began for me almost 50 years ago, and this particular style of Kung Fu that I practice today started nearly 40 years ago. Uh, and I studied another style before I studied Jiao Ga, which is my current style. St studied that for less than a year. Um, so I would say my Kung Fu practice started maybe about almost 41 years ago. When I was growing up, when I was a, a youngster, I had never heard the term Kung Fu, martial arts, or anything until I was maybe uh, 11, 12, 13 years old. Uh, growing up here in the United States, uh, all our athletic activity was involved around the, the ball sports, basketball, football, baseball, you know, track, uh, tennis, those sorts of things. And it wasn't until I... Um, uh, came home from college during the summer one year and a friend of mine was taking uh, karate and he asked me to come train with him which I did and I really enjoyed it. Now is impacting the knowledge and discipline of Kung Fu into others and the demonstration of these students shows they're learning a lot. When we got here at first, we were unsure because it's a small school, but honestly, there's so much happening here, and Sifu's so involved with the community, and there's just so much history in the school since it's been here for 25 years um, that we honestly just fell in love with it. I, I wanted to find something that was both um, athletic and that would teach me discipline, and so that's what brought me to Kung Fu. And at one point, one of our teachers told us, you know, after a while of practicing, you'll realize that this is the hardest thing that you've ever done. Another aspect of the academy is drumming, which has a highly technical beat pattern. Kung Fu 
isn't just about martial arts. It's a skill that builds all-round discipline for any individual in search of inner peace. Still ahead on the news at 10, Manchester City win the 2017-2018 English Premier League season after bottom club West Brom stunned Manchester United 1-0 at Old Trafford. We'll have more in sports news. Stay with us. <laughs>